welcome to Digital Discussions presented by Peaky Digital. Uh, my name is Adam, I'm your host, and I am joined by uh, the Cornwall Young Business Person of the Year, uh, <laughs> Bullenwolf founder, Joe Turnbull. Hi there, nice to, nice welcome, to be here. Welcome. Um, today's podcast is it's going to be quite a fun one, and one I've actually been looking forward to because it's an area of interest for me. And I feel like it's an area of interest for like quite a few millennials and younger. That's definitely... Yep. So in your own words, if you could explain what bull and wolf do sure sure so yeah so bull and wolf we're a, a creative video agency here in cornwall and we make unskippable ads and unmissable content for ambitious brands that's that's what we do so that could be anything from a youtube video series or, or facebook video series mm-hmm. uh social ads uh, content podcast videos events whatever it might be crowdfunding um our main thing is basically making content that works mm. you know we're not afraid to tell businesses that they need to change change their their what they're doing and, and to you know kind of make stuff that's going to get results for them rather than make the stuff they think they need and uh you know we've got a really good track record of, of working with clients mm. over a long period of time which helps us to kind of really build in video strategy with them so it's quite interesting you say that you work not trying to change how your clients think what they want is it almost adapting to what they're you know, their mission statement is and then coming up with what the best possible solution of that is for content wise? Yeah. So a lot a lot of clients come to us with a maybe a rough brief or a you know, we want to advertise this product or, or whatever and they might have an initial idea about how to go about that. And what we'll do is work with them to make sure that that kind of fits the goals for that. So, you know, sometimes you might recommend actually have you looked at creating sort of different versions? You know, they might want a one size fits all video. They're gonna roll out across different platforms. Well actually each platform's a little different. So how can we make sure that you know, it works for that specific platform because, you know, a YouTube six second bumper ad is quite different to a TikTok. So how are we going to make sure that we kind of cover off both those bases? Yeah, um, I think it would be good to cover as as a founder. It's a completely different perspective for, say, if I was to explain what my day to day is. Yes. Could you, in your own words, explain what a day to day you know, life as the founder of Blood yeah. Wolf is like? Yeah. I know it's changed a bit it's in changed. the last few, in like six months last yeah. year. It has changed yeah, I mean, every day is different. I think my, my role these days is not being as much involved in the kind of direct day-to-day video making. Uh, we have a fantastic team of, of creatives, you know, editors, filmmakers, kind of producers that, that that do all that and have, you know, they're experts in their areas. So m- my job really is to to work directly with clients, to uh, talk to them about their video needs, make sure that, you know, we're the right fit for them. And they're, you know, and that what we're, you know, we don't like to work with clients where we're not a good fit either. So, you know, it's, it's like all things marketing, really, we need to understand them. And you know it's it's a it's a two way relationship. So I do a lot of that. So it's a lot of going to events, talking to people, uh, and increasingly, actually, you know, we're we're kind of moving to being a bit purpose driven ourselves as well. We're kind of waiting on B Corp stuff. We've done it. We do you know we're one percent for the planet, Living Wage Foundation accredited. So uh, also doing a lot more talking about that as well and why that matters to us and is important. So yeah, I think it'd be good to talk about B Corp because it's such yeah. a big topic nowadays, yes. and I, yeah. it feels like every day I go onto LinkedIn and I see someone else has applied for B Corp. Yeah. But it's such a rigorous, you know, process that it's it doesn't it doesn't just happen like that. No, and we're not there yet. I hasten to add, you know, there's still a chance <laughs> we won't get it. So I'm I'm preempting preempting ourselves here. But I think we'll put you know, an asterisk next to put it. Put an asterisk next to it. Yeah, uh, I'm, we're fairly confident though. I think we've done a lot of work to make sure that what we've submitted we think is right. So obviously mm. that's going to be up to them to judge in order to make sure that we are for us it's important for for two things it's been a really good way of uh kind of being relatively new and team growing quite fast of establishing kind of a base Mm. and and being like actually we we do all these things but we didn't formalize them so we've got a really good groundwork now as we grow to have these kind of policies and procedures in place that will kind of make sure that our our team and the way we work are are, is you know better for them really Mm. um but then the other side of it as well i think is actually a lot of the brands we end up working with and I think the values that we have fit into that kind of purpose-driven sphere. We yeah. never talk about ourselves as a purpose-driven video agency. Mm. It's kind of in the background that we want to, you know, we think it should be a given that yeah, you work yeah. like that. Yeah. And We've got real questions for you if you're going for an agency with no purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, you know, yeah, basically that's kind of you know, where we're at. And then for us, that kind of B Corp bit is just, it, I think it's very much going to become for the brands that we want to work with. Yeah. It's going to have to be a given, you know, yeah. this is, a, it's a, you know, there's lots of, it's not the perfect scheme by any stretch of imagination. I think there are people with, there are some reasonable criticisms of it. Mm. Nespresso is a B Corp. How, how did that happen? Yeah. Um, but I think actually from our end and, and for a business of our size, 
it's been a really good foundation to absolutely just check that what we're doing is what we want to be is doing and it. is in line with yeah. in line with some you know basic standards i think i can vouch for your team and your team's ability to take your reusable mugs over to <laughs> the coffee local coffee shop yeah um, it's yep. always quite a sight occasionally when i drive into work i drive past your office which <laughs> used to be the one that we shared yes and yeah, you've yeah, now yeah. expanded into a it's a very nice office yeah, and you've, thank you yeah. you've got a lovely neon sign in there yeah uh, the amount of times i've seen Likewise. chris the, uh, the creative director at yep. Wolf, um walking out of the office with his just reusable mug yeah if you saw any other place in Falmouth or yeah. Penryn you would have serious questions yeah. as to what is going on yeah but no straight from there yeah he's off to get coffee yeah good coffee shop next door we just take our mugs across because yeah, why just... get a takeaway cup yeah easy no questions, easy to do yeah. and they don't they you know they're perfectly happy so absolutely yeah um I think before we get into the the nitty-gritty yeah. there's a couple questions that we're gonna yeah. you know really set the tone with really get to know Joe Turnbull what Uh-oh. makes Joe Turnbull tick yeah so cool. to, to start with, uh, what is your go-to comfort show? Go-to comfort show? Comfort show. Not oh. just uh, like, what is your all-time? Wow. I think... What does Joe put on at the end of the day when he's had news. a long day? No, that sounds terrible. <laughs> um, well, there's worse things to do. There is, no. I mean, I do... My, my favourite TV show of all time is The Thick of It. Yeah. And I've actually, got a lot of praise recently. I as... could just watch that endlessly and be perfectly happy. Yeah. So I think if I was really struggling, that or Toast of London. Mm. Yeah. A bit of Matt Berry. Matt Berry, Yeah. He's yep. seen some. Uh, he's seen a bit of a rise recently as well. Yeah. I've, I've seen him all over the place. Like I've always known of him because yeah. he was in um, the IT crowd as well. Yeah, wasn't he? IT crowd. Yeah, um, what we do in the shadows gonna, now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, next one: City Break or Week in the Sun? Which is actually a very interesting question for you. Is you're a man <laughs> who has travelled the globe. Well, yeah, I, I don't know about that. I think uh, I would have always said City Break until mm. about six months ago because I've always liked the idea of seeing new things see new, yeah. and kind of they get an opportunity to see some history and explore new places mm. i happened and i've never really been on a relaxing sunny holiday until just before christmas i think i've been more relaxed so i might i would have said six months ago yeah. city break i will now go for week in the sunday and nothing do you tan sort of uh, so i have already, a bit of a tan you've already got one up on me yeah yeah my yeah. reason <laughs> i don't i prefer city breaks is i can't go in the sun yeah i have i, I do manage to burn myself you're well and good but i'd have to live under a parasol the entire yeah, time yeah yeah no I, I i did tan so you know winter tan yeah. yeah, could be could be worse. Could be worse. Uh, okay, so gonna go back to before you set up Bullamore. Yeah, you had a bit of history in TV production. Yes, would you be able to tell us a bit more about the experience before Bullamore was yep. created? Yeah, I mean, if I go back a little bit further as well, actually, when it. I when I I have no creative background, I think is the best way to describe it. I did a politics and economics degree, yeah. <laughs> graduated to be a management consultant, and you know, very corporate kind yeah. of kind of world. Worked for a great company, but realized quite quickly I didn't want to do that. Mm. And that's what kind of led me on the journey where I ended up in, in TV. And I did that for about three years before moving to Cornwall. And, and that was kind of moving up, I suppose, from being a runner on, on Hunted, which is yeah. a show on Channel 4 where, you know, fugitives get chased across the UK mm. uh, to win some money. And that was quite a, that was the first thing I ever did in TV. And that was quite a, you know. It's quite a good one, yeah. Uh, it's, it's quite abstract as quite an abstract. idea compared to most of them <laughs> yeah. would go for. And uh, quite a kind of uh, baptism of fire, I think. Uh, mm. But it was a good opportunity because small teams, it meant that I was able to, uh, the, the, the PD or the producers were, gave me opportunity to use cameras or shoot mm. things, even when, you know, we're out and about. And, and because it was a small team, you got to see much kind of more about how each role worked Yeah, and kind of continued then doing that. So I did Celebrity Hunted, did some what we call glossy floor entertainment stuff as well. So uh, studio shows mm. and uh, kind of the last few shows I did before the end was another one a bit like Hunted called The Heist, mm. um, where I was on a junior shooting researcher and, and a documentary in Latvia about paratroopers as well, where I got to shoot. I told you you travelled the globe. Yeah, so, <laughs> so you know, they, they were great opportunities to, to learn, I think. I got yeah. I was quite lucky that, I think it's one of those industries where it is a bit about who you know, but you've got to work hard and be good. And sure. I think just being observant in that meant that I suddenly got this a bit of a knack for filmmaking. I always mm. liked photography, so I think mm. I had a bit of a ability. Dog <laughs> flying past those outside. Yeah. See it, there was a dog running past <laughs> with a tennis ball. Yeah, um, but I think, you know, I had an eye for photography. I liked yeah. that. Um, so it was a bit of a natural progression then to kind of do some of it myself. So while working in TV, I was shooting some stuff on the side for people that I knew and yeah. then kind of expanded to here where we are now. Yeah. So is it, would you say it's the the purpose that we were on about earlier is the reason that you started Bull and Wolf is because maybe let's circle back to it using your, your politics and economics yeah. uh degree that you got have you seen sort of the two come together and make founding your own video agency a lot 
easier or is, do you think they sort of work hand in hand? I think they go hand in hand a bit. Mm. I think I'd, I'd always wanted to run my own business, weirdly. So I think when I was nine, I signed all my mates up to work for my building company. They even <laughs> got trucks. It obviously never happened because I was nine. Yeah, of course. But, but, you know, um, it kind of goes together, I think. And, and one of the things for running Bullet Morph out of Cornwall is actually is to kind of, I think there's a great creative lifestyle down here. Yeah. And there's a work-life balance that you don't get in other parts of the UK. Yeah. And for us, that means you get better creativity, which means mm. we get better results for our clients. And it's trying to tell that story as well. Mm. That That's kind of, I think, the tie for it as well. Yeah, it's, it's that work-life balance is so important and yeah. conducive of creativity. It's, you know, the most important factor. Um, would you say that there are any sort of factors from working in television that you've taken into Bull and Wolf? And, you know, have you seen anything sort of, trends from tv that have worked especially well working with clients that you have now and of the past it's a good question i think when i started out it was just little tricks and tips around filmmaking that mm. the producer would say oh have you, ever, you know hold, make sure you hold your shots for 10 seconds before you do movement or whatever that meant yeah. i was getting better stuff from day one mm. uh and, and just really rigid things around you know i think people it's a mistake some early filmmakers make is kind of backing up your rushes and being really sensible, that kind of mm. stuff, kind of the, the project, process. the process side yeah. of it, right? Which I knew from TV, so that's never so far touch wood, you know? Yeah. It's not been a huge a problem for us. Uh, but I think carrying it over is this kind of professionalism as well and, and yeah, yeah. understanding that you know, we're hiring people primarily based on kind of values as well, mm. that they can learn on the job. And actually, yeah. the, you know, the team we've got now, actually, I think some of the most ambitious people in kind of the creative field are people who can pick things up quite quickly and, mm. and kind of observe around them and, and, and learn. Mm. And I think that's been something that we've taken on quite a lot because that's how I learn how to film. And actually, I think a lot of the guys, you know, you can see they're kind of paying attention to what's happening yeah. and picking stuff up. Do you think um, with the, the team that you have at Bull and Wolf, is five or six now? Technically seven of us. Seven, yeah, yes, yeah. seven. Is it now that you, you trust them and obviously the level, you obviously go through quite a rigorous hiring process. Yeah. You obviously work out... Um, how much you trust that they know the fundamentals yeah. and then you are happy from there to you know bring in sort of some industry knacks that you picked up over the years but also some training and that you know ultimately will provide more value yeah i think trust is really important in that i think you know having hiring new people it's always as you go from just being kind of you to having new people is always a challenge is yeah. kind of oh yeah i know that they can do their job but you know i might have done it a different way it doesn't mean the way they did it was wrong so trust is really important. I think trusting them to do a good job. And I think actually that empowers people to be better. So yeah, that's that, that's one thing. And actually, yeah, learning on the job. I think, you know, we've, I think especially down here, training in that sphere, other than what maybe you did at uni is quite hard. Yeah. So we you know we have opportunities where we've got mentors or go on shadowing for the team. Um, you know, we know someone that does films, things like CBBs and stuff down yeah. here. And so we've sent the team off to go and shadow them for a day on an actual set with you know, yeah. TV producers and stuff as a kind of way of seeing how filming in a different way works. Yeah, I suppose the best way to learn is always on the job, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There's no point looking at a textbook. I can't imagine any of us have looked at a textbook in a long time no. to learn something about no. our current roles. Uh, yeah, and you know, actually other than like using you know, this YouTube or there's courses you can do actually for filmmaking, doing it on the job and practicing is the best That's way. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be quite interesting to talk about, you know, how in the last six months, 12 months that you've sort of relinquished the sort of responsibility of filmmaking and yeah. gone more into the pitching and the, yeah. the more I wouldn't say corporate side but you know yeah. what I mean yeah yeah how how was that as a process yeah you know going trusting really yeah. really trusting because obviously there's an element of um, control that you have still yeah. making some of the films and yeah like, yeah how was that for you uh, weirdly easy in that yeah. I think actually my background I could film stuff that looked nice and I could make good videos and we didn't get to where we were without doing that mm. but actually we're hiring people that i know are better than me at those things and that's the best way of doing it so actually i know they will do a better job of you kick your feet up you'll be fine well yeah, yeah well but you know like you know we've got great editors so i know they'll edit a better video or could do better animation yeah. than me uh so actually that kind of handing it over was relatively easy i suppose that, you've got the team members that have that experience yeah exactly so you know that and it's, and it's so hiring pe exactly and hiring people that fit in the team was important so that mm. when no one shoots actually we always used to get really good feedback on shoots. And I think one of the kind of USPs that we have is that actually some companies find that shoots can be a bit difficult and actually our yeah. team always got good feedback and they continue to have done. So that puts more trust. I can put more trust and faith in them. So yeah, it was, a, I think it it's not so much um, not trusting them to do the job. It's just, you know, it's knowing that actually 
setting expectations right at the start, getting mm. you, you know, because we, we have a certain quality and standard that we want to deliver, and sure we keep that up. Yeah. So with Bull and Wolf, it's yeah. video marketing. It's yeah. core, you know, you're there to drive sales for yeah. your, your clients and not when it's not sales, it's leads yeah. and, you know, just general brand awareness. Yeah. All good mm. metrics that, you know, all businesses are after. Um, video marketing as a whole, would you say it's one of the most underutilized marketing channels there is? It's a good question. I don't know if it's underutilized. I think... Underrated even? Maybe underrated. I think yeah. some companies don't appreciate how important it is. And I think when we started out three or four years ago, it was very easy to say, if you're not doing video, you're kind of like where people, you know, people were missed Instagram at the start and doing, mm. you know, being really on top of it with kind of photography. If you weren't doing video, you're, you're in the same place, you're missing the boat or you're going to be behind. I think a lot of companies understand that video is important now, but I think mm. a lot of companies necessarily do it right or understand yeah. the volume side of it so yeah. i think it's underutilized it is underutilized in the sense i think a lot of people don't use it to its full potential and actually a lot of companies can uh without having to spend fortunes actually really create a lot of good content so why would you say that video marketing is underrated do you think it's because brands are thinking that this notion of maybe five years ago that it was too expensive and maybe didn't have the results to back it up but now you're finding in the last five years you have this catalog of uh results that have shown you know there is really some traffic behind this and some traction that you can gain from it yeah i think you know, I, as like i said i don't know whether i would say it's underrated potentially mm. i think it's just uh, it's maybe underutilized i think we yeah. said earlier i think th th there's an evidence base to say you know how well video works i think it works primarily because we're looking at platforms, TikTok especially is a good example of this, mm. that it's about kind of gratification and consuming your content rapidly, right? And uh, a moving visual medium is much more likely to grab someone's attention than a yeah. still image or text. It's as simple as that. It it's is kind a of basic I have nature. seen it many times. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of, that's just like the basic human nature side of it, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think what brands need to understand about that when, when perhaps they don't is that actually making one video every six months isn't, going to do a lot it's unless it's part of a that, specific plan yeah. and actually you know for most people especially b2c but, mm. but also b2b you need to be putting out content there all the time yeah in, in lots of different forms and that includes photography that includes whatever but actually video you know it could be a podcast it could be a youtube series it could be tiktoks whatever it is you know and tiktoks are really accessible yeah they actually do. for, for yeah. brands is that you could you, you know if you're creating content all the time we've got quite a fickle world so <laughs> it kind of you create it and it goes you create it and it goes you create it and it goes there's very few brands that make content that they're expecting to be able to use for a whole year yeah. as an asset you might get some brands making big adverts they'll repurpose mm. but you know people are making youtube series they only you know they're not there for longevity it's there to just continue yeah. churning out the content it's funny you should say that because i was actually thinking obviously as the turn of the year at the time we're recording it's january of 2023 yeah. um and I actually, I saw a couple of tweets that were like, this happened in 2022. And I was like, that feels like three, four years ago. And that is probably the same sort of concept with video and yeah. those brands that are trying to use video for an entire year. Yeah. Um, I think moving on, what would you say to brand, uh, what, I say smaller brands, medium to small brands, um, the ones that say video is only for big brands. Yeah. If, if a client was, uh, a potential yeah. client was coming to you and yeah. go, isn't video just for, you know, big brands? Big brands, big budgets. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm going to say it's not, but I think it's because yeah. to some extent, social media is kind of democratized mm. marketing. It's interesting. Yeah. I think, you know, whether you go out to Instagram and it's just pictures, that started this trend of actually small businesses could get really good reach, mm. really good engagement and reach new people and new audiences just by posting some really good photos. And I think video is the extension of that. And if you look at things like TikTok, especially, and YouTube, actually, not only can, you know, things like YouTube advertising, actually, that's quite easily accessible for most brands. Yeah. You know, you're targeting specific audiences. You're, you're not inherently having to bid with the big guys because you're bidding on different stuff. Yeah. So if you want to make a YouTube ad, you can do that. Mm. That's really accessible for even a small business. And it's about being sensible with your budgets, I suppose, as well. Mm. But, you know, in that case, as you guys know, that will get you results. So it will, the return on investment on that is going to be huge. Absolutely. So if you keep doing it, you kind of you'll see the benefit. But things like TikTok, you know, if we look at COVID lockdown. Actually, TikTok, huge, wasn't it? some small brands on there went absolutely massive. Mm. More so than big brands who have struggled, I think, to mm. keep up with how content is changing. 
and have that rapid trend based approach to video that I would say a lot of small companies can do. And actually that's the benefit. You can yeah. be much more agile as a small company. So if you're making videos, you can be, you've probably got a much narrower audience or niche. Mm. It might be location based. It could be a specific kind of demographic. Uh, you've actually got quite good potential to make content that really stands out to your audience. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting that you mentioned about uh, TikTok and during COVID, the lockdown. Yeah. Um, I find that some of, one of the best accounts that I think across all social media that utilizes video, but maybe not necessarily sort of high end production is Duolingo. Yeah. It's sort of the go-to. I mean, if you were to go for like, what is the Twitter equivalent? You'd go with Ryanair, wouldn't you? Yeah. What would you say to people that wanted to just go with the sort of the Duolingo approach to video to video marketing and TikTok? Yeah, and Ryanair's TikTok actually is also very good. Oh no, that is true. I apologize, <laughs> Ryanair. I have um, seen them. <laughs> yeah, and actually, again, that's a really interesting one, Ryanair. Completely diverging from your question, but um, a brand that has perhaps a bad reputation yeah. has managed to kind of have a good reputation. It's through, almost embraced it by being. It's embraced being what it is, and yeah. actually, people are like, "Oh, I'll fly with you because." find you funny right i'm a big fan of those um, tweets where they go yeah window seat and it's just exactly a hole in the wall exactly yeah. uh, i think the duolingo one you know as kind of crazy as some of the stuff they do is and you know the jokes about the fact they'll hold your family hostage yeah. and all this kind of stuff the big green bird the big green bird it's it's done with one one thing in mind which is it's about entertaining yeah. your audience first right and that's the number one thing brands should look to entertain and not sell it's the gratification that you're on about yeah. isn't it exactly it's about appealing to people as human beings as authentically as you can i think what they've done obviously is they've got a person who's fantastic mm. and given them the freedom that's to important, manage isn't it? TikTok. I, yeah, and I think that's interesting for your your business and Bull yeah. Wolf. And I know that you're always keen for input from yep. from your clients and you know, you welcome as much yep. or as little control as yep. possible. Um so I think it's good to highlight that if you're independent and you're on you know you're in house yeah it's always good that you know maybe the people higher up should really trust that the person who's doing yeah. it is qualified to do what they're doing knows what they're doing and i think um you know for mine we, we don't particularly make tiktoks because we know that our expertise is not going to be in turning something around in a day because yeah. you kind of need that person that's embedded within your organization to be able to do that yeah. uh, or, or someone that has someone that's dedicated to making that kind of content i know you guys can mm, do that yeah. as well so for us we can then do the other broader parts of the video strategy because it's such a complex you know it's not just tiktoks it's a whole range of things no, right no, it is yeah um you know ryan and i have tiktok and duolingo have tiktok but they also have tv adverts and youtube series and whatever so you know there's a, there's a whole range of things but i think yeah tiktok you know if you look at ryan and duolingo as well the, the things that are traditional brands or people that aren't are, you know haven't adapted are scared to do is use you know, it's like music licensing is a big one. Yeah. Um, being a not being afraid to swear or do things that on it's trends that, that are a bit, is, yeah. bit kind of tongue in cheek, bit more risque, yeah. bit more risque. Actually, brands that embrace that do really well on TikTok yeah. and social media. And I think actually that applies for all all forms of video at, the, at this point. Actually, yeah. is that some brands take themselves too seriously and are too polished, yeah. and the ones that are a bit more. I think authenticity now is probably my number one important thing. That I say to clients mm. is. People want to see you for who you are. They know not everyone in your organization is perfect. They probably know your product is not perfect. <laughs> yeah. So stop pretending it is. Yeah. Actually talk to them as human beings. And organizations and businesses that let people in do really well. Formula One drive to survive. Mm. Formula One has had a massive boost in viewership because it, it let has. people in behind the scenes. Yeah. When 10 years ago, it was one of the most closed off kind of, you know, you, you watched it, it on telly. It was a niche interest, wasn't niche it? Niche interest. Time, yeah. And you would watch it on TV, but the teams were super secretive. You never yeah. knew anything about what happened behind the scenes. And actually, that opening it up to, to kind of prying eyes, that fly on the wall, being authentic, has has given it a whole new breadth of life that yeah. has got, you know, expanded its reach exponentially. So, okay. So, talking about authenticity, yeah. I think it'd be interesting to see your thought or hear your thoughts even on how authenticity is used to for brands to establish themselves as yep. you know leaders in their field yeah how far would you say you know a brand being their authentic self will go in establishing themselves in this position that they want yeah i think if you look at what i would say are some of the most well-known up-and-coming brands people brands that have good you know kind of engagement with customers mm. people like in it innocent own my coca-cola still has relatively good engagement because people buy into its values about being authentic being honest about you know where things come from and that was their original vibe finisterre here in cornwall i think have always been you know they've always cared about the planet one of the first b corps you know they've been, been b corp for ages 
um, and I've always made content kind of talking about that and done a yeah. lot of a lot of content that's not just like little ads, but actually the content they've created most of all is stuff where they're talking about making a difference. So it could be about the planet or the seas or you know, more recently they've done things around how they made an, uh, an inclusive swimwear and, and um, you know, wetsuits so that people, whether you're wearing a hijab, mm. you can still surf, right? Yeah. And they made a really good video about kind of making making swimming and being in the sea more accessible to, to women. Mm, yeah. So that's content that's then been an authentic self. And that mm. gets really good, not only does it get good engagement, but I think, again, people buy into it because they... Encourages they, brand support and almost support loyalty, and doesn't loyalty. it? Yeah. yeah. And actually, you know, brands like those where they're kind of being... They're getting their customers to be activists as well. There's mm. a lot of that going on at the moment, kind of making your customers activists for a cause. Uh, I think then, you know, you get far more engagement by being authentic. I uh, suppose, yeah. I think where it can sometimes go wrong is where you're trying to force authenticity that yes. isn't you. Yeah. I think, interestingly enough, that the one that was in the papers a lot over the last year was Brewdog and their yeah. World Cup campaign, wasn't yes. it? That yeah. saw a, lo- a lot of flack. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think it is interesting that it, it's almost sitting down with everyone that yeah. you've got and going right what are what's our yeah. you know what's our mission what what are we about yeah because you don't want to be trying to force a narrative that you don't necessarily fit exactly into. and i think you know that breeder wants an example of we're against this and then doing something that felt yeah. the opposite and i think they're probably in a tricky situation regardless of what your thoughts on breed dog are yeah. that they might try and do content they think is their authentic self but there's a public perception in some areas that might clash with that and in that case you're in a challenging area because it's almost Ryanair-esque isn't it yeah, yeah yeah and actually what Ryanair have done on the other side is you know uh with their with their kind of TikToks and their, mm. and their Instagram is being much more accepting of yeah we are cheap and cheerful and you get what you get and yeah. take, taking Don't the piss out luxury, of it yeah this is not a luxury thing we're going to fly you to Rome for 30 quid yeah great cool and that's you're in they, Rome congratulations and they're honest about yeah. that and they take the mick out of other people and actually that you know yeah, other other brands are way behind them on socials. Yeah, so yeah, talking about Ryanair, but not specifically yeah. Ryanair. But yeah, the way that they've gone about their video. Yeah, viral marketing. Yes, is a hot topic. Always has been. It's actually. Yeah. I did some reading on it once, and I believe it started with Yahoo. Yeah, probably. I think, I think it was email marketing that they <laughs> yeah, tried. Yeah, yeah. The, the first viral Went term viral. came from um, Yahoo. In, yeah, I think. I can't remember what it was and I'm not going to make a fool of myself, <laughs> yeah. I'm guessing. 2000 it was, something. <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe. 19 uh, something, With yeah. email marketing. Um, how would you say, since Bull and Wolf's sort of yep. creation, that your role has evolved? Because I'm sure that you have potential clients come to you and go, right, we want a viral video. Yeah. And that's it. There's yep. no like, okay, we're, uh, you know, organic hand yeah. soap brand or something yeah and we're going to give you some sort of brief the yeah. only brief is we want a viral video yeah you know i mean there's two things we say to most people there, there's no guarantee that anything will go viral there i don't know if there is i wouldn't say there's a secret source to it either no. i think there's things you can do and most of it are the same for making a normal video which is yeah. understanding the audience uh being authentic or funny helps with virality yeah uh, so you know if you're able to take the piss out of yourself or be mm-hmm. a bit humorous fantastic putting it in the right place and a lot of it is just damn luck. It is. There's some really great examples of brands uh, who have put the same video out six or seven times and just changed yeah. the intro hook. First one got, the first six got not a lot. Seventh one got a million views. Yeah. How much of that is luck? How much is that the intro hook? There's so many different metrics as to what makes something go viral. What's interesting, I think, is that more than ever, the opportunity to go viral is open. Mm. I don't think it's, you know, big brands have, an easier time because they have already a bit of a large captive audience yeah. but actually things get shared around so quickly the way algorithms work if you make a good bit of content it will do well yeah it might take a few goes at it mm. uh, and actually a lot of brands you can see start posting the same content after six months so try it again or yeah. three months see if they can change the intro hook change the outro change the middle rearrange it and see yeah. if it make a difference I think the algorithm is something that every brand has ever yeah. you know everyone in the marketing space has had to deal yeah. with at some yeah. point and inconveniently enough no algorithm is the same nope so uh, all things work differently and you, yeah. you do a lot of work on social videos yes but you don't necessarily aim for virality but you are looking to create video that is from start to finish likely to drive yes. whatever your target is yeah. or whatever your goal 100%. is and that's understanding the brand so you know we're never going to say to someone we know this video is going to go viral yeah but if they know their audience there's a chance of it i suppose for us it's about understanding okay if you're making 
you know, we're doing something at the moment, which is kind of like a documentary style video, but it's being made as an ad. So that means at the start, we need to have something that's a bit short and snappy to grab someone's attention. Mm. The rest of the video can be very docky style and slower, but if we don't get them in the first six seconds, yeah, they're lost. So, or for example, it's about different formats and size, subtitles. If you're putting on Instagram, you need subtitles because... Accessibility, or issues, or something or accessibility people listen without sound yeah you know, most people listen you know, most people on the train will not have sound on instagram if you've not got your headphones in you'll just watch it on the preview wouldn't you? exactly yeah. so well how do you get your message across then um you know if it's a youtube ad well six seconds they're captive yeah but if it's 30 seconds they're not how do you get them to stay so it's understanding you know the brand the organizations we've done a project recently that was an environmental one uh and they that got hundreds of thousands of views on 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 socials yeah. or on instagram yeah uh because we made content that it was it was short snappy to the point and yeah. it had a strong message at the end and actually you know that was about understanding a what they wanted but also be understanding the audience and kind of the message and, and putting it making it punchy yeah and i suppose there is by making it short punchy and snappy this that and the other it's very it's needed because i think we're part of a generation and anyone younger and now has sort of this if we're on YouTube and there's a 30 second advert, we are waiting, we are counting down the seconds to click yeah. skip, aren't we? Yeah. And I still do that. Yeah. And it really takes something special, which is yeah. where the consideration for, right, well, you know, trust the pros to know that yeah. this needs to be short and snappy. Yeah. And on that, I think what is interesting is, you know, someone might skip it after five seconds. Doesn't mean it's not gone in. No, this is true. So you've got those, you've still got those first six seconds to imprint something in someone's mind that the next time they see your ad or they might see you in on Instagram instead of YouTube, it, it begins to sink in a little bit. Yeah, it's funny you should say that because I think I remember there was a Strava advert. Yeah. And it's it was like a cycling one. Yeah. I've never once cycled, but I have used Strava. And it's like, that one is ingrained in my head because yeah. I've watched it so many, the first yeah. five seconds so many yeah, times. Yeah, exactly. I was like, it's almost like that you need to do a micro advert in that five second period. Yeah. Almost get off your, yeah. your core messaging yeah. in that five seconds and yeah. then... Yeah, complete the bigger. Well, so those six-second YouTube bumper ads, right? Is that's a whole that's a whole thing in itself because yeah. you've, you've got to get a brand across. Yeah, you've got to get probably some kind of call to action of some sort. So even if it's McDonald's, it might be you know, double Big Mac available yeah. this week six ninety nine. You've got to get it all across in six seconds. It's got to have an intro. It's got a, you know, intro, outro, it's middle. Tough work. It's all got yeah. to be in there, and yeah, it's despite, six seconds. Yeah, despite you know. it being six seconds, there's so much time yeah. that actually goes into yeah. forming. Yeah, but that's that's also not neglecting them actually a lot of brands are making YouTube series, longer form content, because actually, yeah. if you can get a captive audience of people that will watch a series, mm. maintaining customers, especially like in these current kind of economic climate, is actually just as important as getting new on sometimes. Yeah, and I think for the brands that are, or maybe previously were using YouTube ads, yeah. creating their own YouTube channels and their long yeah. form content, yeah. you've mentioned yeah. the KFC, um, yeah. Liverpool sort of series that they do. Yeah. Like while that's not indirectly, uh, no, not while it's not directly promoting yeah. KFC. Yeah, it's almost sponsoring it, and that content yeah. is driving traffic. Have exactly. you seen anyone come to you and go, "I want to go for this," or is it all a bit more structured towards adverts? We, we do get some kind of people looking for content series. Uh, I suppose that's you need to come up with the original concept to really make yeah. it work, I guess. And we're still talking to some brands about doing that this year. Uh, one, one we've done recently, which is quite interesting, is we've made a digital. Uh, manual for a barbecue smoker right oh. so that one's really interesting because actually they're trying to do that as an accessibility thing yeah less paper uh accessible to people in different languages yeah that's a youtube series that is there for people that are kind of again you've bought this thing you want to go and learn how we'll to use, use it, it to the best Here's of its a video. Ability, yeah it's nice and easy to understand doesn't matter what language it's in uh, and it's easy to update if you change it in the future yeah and i think um Going back to what you said about the video that you had that had hundreds of thousands of views, would you say it's important to establish with your brand whether, you know, which metric means the most to you? Yeah. So obviously while you never would promise something to go viral, yeah. even if it does go, you know, semi-viral, if it has no, it doesn't generate any leads or any conversions, it, it maybe doesn't work, it hasn't been as effective as you think it is and you should maybe tailor it towards trying to get those. Yeah, I think it depends on what your aims are. Yeah. I think if you're going for purely brand awareness, views might be good. I think that's also looking at, looking at, data that you can to kind of be mm. like okay actually you know, this has resonated with my audience or actually hang on these and it's got loads of views but none of these people will ever buy my product yeah, well then maybe you've yeah. done something a bit wrong or, or it's it's gone viral but not with the people you want it to why not yeah. so i think that's just a constant thing of looking at you know creating content and kind of reviewing what you've made and seeing Sometimes how you can strategy, improve strategy doesn't it strategy is part, which is yeah. really important actually as important as the videos that you make is understanding why yeah. you're making them um 
but yeah i think you know for a lot of most companies that we work with actually they have different objectives for stuff so Mm. it's not always usually about views it might be about we want to have this content here so that people you know know how to use a smoker or Mm. know about our environmental campaign or here's a case study that we just want to talk about something that we've done and that all that is is that's a credibility builder so if someone searches for them being like should i use this person oh here's a case study yeah testimonial review yeah, that's okay interesting. yeah we'll go to that so you know video can have so many different reasons and we always say to clients okay well what if someone's watched your video what do you want to do next yeah because the answer might be nothing i just want it to be imprinted in the back of my head mm. but a lot of people are like oh well we want them to kind of uh go to our, go to our website and click on a link or you know we just want them to understand more about us okay yeah. so they're, they're different goals i guess yeah but that's what you established before yeah. you, before yeah. you even begin yeah, yeah. you know coming up with the concept exactly um you offer cinematic videos which i've also always thought were really cool yeah and i know that particular members of your team really do like working on those sort of projects yeah sort of glossy ones glossy ones that are high production yeah they look great yeah how in the last few years as social media and especially tiktok has come to the yeah. forefront yeah would you f- say that more people have come to you and gone i want videos for social than maybe your traditional youtube app i would even say not that i have any sort of uh, information to back up this claim i yeah, would yeah. say that adverts on tiktok maybe now are more popular than youtube ads in a way or not even maybe. remotely um <laughs> i think tiktok advertising is still not as infancy but it's, it's changing right yeah. and i think uh you know, you start 2020, you would see like people advertising really dodgy like phone cases or something. Yeah. And now, you know, Apple and McDonald's and everyone are on it. Mm. But um, I think, I think this, the kind of glossy versus not glossy comes back to that authenticity bit. So you can make something look really glossy yeah, and it'd be authentic, right? So you can make something that tells a really powerful story mm. and it looks really cinematic because it's about it's about the emotion, not just of the story, but the, the, the image gives across. Yeah, But you can also make something really glossy that just looks glossy and yeah exactly i mean shit i think know. that i think that's just how like <laughs> the world uh, the world yeah. of video marketing has evolved that now yeah. you glossy is i'll say glossy a good video and a yeah. high production is almost standard yeah. isn't it and yeah. it's it's what differentiates the good videos from the bad videos is the storytelling storytelling and understanding gratification yeah. this that and the other yeah and actually you know the, the phone shot stuff is quite interesting because actually a lot of people there's a lot of cases for kind of user generated content and using kind of understanding of, 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 of filmmaking and, and editing to make videos that stand out and look really high end and high quality, but you're basically using stuff that your customers have shot mm. the entire way through. Again, that can tell a really powerful story without you having to go and film anything. Mm. So there's, there's you know, yeah, we, we get a lot of people wanting us to film stuff, but actually it's about creating energy, it's creating stories, it's that strategy part, understanding what they actually want out of it. So, Joe, in your line of work, there are like three almost three different types of content that you make which is yes. would you say that's how you could almost break it down yeah. if we had you know umbrella terms for them um and you mentioned this at the most recent speaky event that we yeah. held yeah um hero content yes if you could explain it to someone i sort of know what it is so yeah. this would actually be very helpful okay you know for yeah, someone yeah. who has a rough idea or has no idea how would you explain hero content so hero content i think video content comes in lots of different forms there's lots of different ways of thinking about video the hero content is it's kind of a google thing originally youtube thing which is hero hub help or hero hub hygiene mm. it's also called the idea is there's, there's three different types of videos you're making hero videos which are your big tentpole john Lewis christmas advert yeah big ad basically yeah. right it's a really broad way of bringing people in it's appealing to new customers and briefly worth mentioning that hub is kind of like always on content so video series how to's etc and then you've got um I'm gonna start again. Yep. Um, we've got hub content, which is kind of which is kind of content that draws people in. So it could be a video series, that, that KFC one, the KFC yeah. football one is a really good example. And then help or hygiene, which is considered to be stuff that is uh, answering the questions your customers are asking. Mm-hmm. So that could be a how to, uh, troubleshooting, uh, all that kind of stuff. And, that, and 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 the kind of hierarchy is hero is to get new customers. Hub sure. is mostly existing or people that that were interested in your brand and then help is for people that already have bought your product or service but yeah hero is big ad think big yeah. ad and in whatever they're, form they're that might cinema be cinema adverts are they cinema adverts tv adverts it could be a really big youtube advert yeah um you know it it could be something like a christmas advert or tied to a specific time of year um but yeah but yeah so kind of a big big tentpole your reaching new customers. Almost, yeah. yeah big brand video so what would you say to a client or someone that comes to you and go, we want yeah. hero content and yes. they have no other 
you know, yeah. history of video? Would, you, yeah. would that be something you recommend or would you go, yeah. right, we need to do it in a step-by-step -step process and build up to it? Or is it good depends. to start with that and then, you know, build Dep foundations after? Yeah, it depends. I mean, we, we uh, t to be fair, these days we don't work with that many brands that don't really value video. I think it's, you know, we're, we're not here to convince people that video is worthwhile. <laughs> We know it is. You spend actually, a lot of time, you know, yeah, actually, wasting time on that. Exactly. Yeah. And actually the people we, we want to work with are ones that know video is important, but perhaps want to get more out of it, I guess. Yeah. Um, we've, we've, you know, we've made a cinema advert recently and um, for, for Tro College, uh, which is kind of replacing one that's like eight years old. So it's quite, the other one's almost wow. kind of... And were um, they still running that? The one? They were still running it. Or, wow. Yeah, it's quite an old old ad and kind of almost, you know, became a legend in itself. Kind of people knew it when they went to cinema yeah. in Cornwall. So we replaced that. And um, for us, that was, yeah, they, we need this hero ad, right? It's got, yeah. So for us, it was kind of making it relevant to people that are 15 or 16 now and, and making it really punchy and yeah. interesting. So they came to us saying, we want this. What do you think would work? And then so we said, well, this, this, you know, we mm. think we should approach it like this. And this is the way that we're going to make, a tr you know, make it interesting to people that you're appealing to, which is 15, 16 year olds, mm. right? Rather than an older audience. So I think if someone said to us, you know, we haven't made a video before, we haven't made a video for a while, but we know it's important we make a hero video it would be going back to understanding sure we can do that but is that the right thing for you to be doing if yeah. it is because because the problem, problem with a lot of people just making a hero video is from a budgetary perspective it's kind of a one-hit wonder yeah what other stuff are you then doing to supplement it supplement yeah. that so if you've got one big hero video and then people want to find out more about you and there's nothing yeah that's probably less valuable than making a slightly less good hero video and having some other content for people to engage yeah. with so that's that strategy part really you know you probably need to have all of the elements in there somewhere mm. and you need to look at again it's that you know a bit like with you guys i wouldn't just come and spend just do a paid advert if i wasn't doing for leads mm. if i didn't also have some other lead gen stuff in my sales process yeah you know you need to have all the parts of the process for it to really work yeah it's, it's interesting you s should say that and i think when i did some reading about it it was like you could use hero content to almost break through but if you're not trying to use hub and help or help, hygiene, help hygiene yeah yeah you know to supplement it alongside yeah. it's yeah. almost not as beneficial yeah yeah and that goes back to like you know be the same as you know if uh you made a really good advert hero advert and you had a you had no instagram page but mm. like where, where where do people go to find out oh, if you said oh i've got the put an advert up in the cinema and i've got the best restaurant in falmouth mm. and then there was nothing else they could find out about you pointless right would you say there's the like almost qualifying factors that go yeah right you need to tick all of these boxes and then we go, yeah, hero content is something that would work. And yeah. I suppose that's where you you guys come in, yeah. you know, in working and developing yeah. these videos going, right, well, if we do this, have you got this for them to go to after? Yeah, and, and it's kind of then talk about, well, okay, you want to do a hero ad, you haven't got this other content, well, what can we do to kind of try and help you as well start having some of that content? So it could be, well, you know, we're coming to you to film, yeah. let's create some other bits of content out of that that help fill up your, your kind of library, I suppose. Mm. That is a uh, very interesting, and I think hero content is something that, as a, as a phrase, is something that I don't think as many people are as aware. Do you yeah. do you address it as that to, to people that you work with? Sometimes I think yeah. it, uh, increasingly I think it's the 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 way content is changing. It's becoming more blurred between what those things are. So sometimes yeah. saying to people, "Well, you're having this thing," they're like, "Well, that's not what we're going for." So it's it's kind of in that i think the hero one let's say we talk a lot more about kind of ads and content and there's a separation between those two mm. and the ads aren't always hero content no no you're uh, right yeah. and content can also be here it's all very blurred so <laughs> for us we we talk much more about ads and content are you putting money behind it is there a specific audience for it uh or is it content in that you're trying to make reach out organically to people uh, and actually they require different strategies and there's crossover between them so we can, mm. you can do both but they need different things to, to really work. So that, that more often we're talking about it in that kind of that split with, with audience, with, with companies um, that they need to understand the difference between ads and content and that you can repurpose content as ads, but you need to understand how it's going to work. Yeah. And I think what is also interesting about Hero Content and is the crossover that it has with digital marketing as well. Yeah. I, it's not something I'd sort of comprehended before, but as a content writer myself that yeah. like all three of those pillars are things that you know you work to and that's yeah. how you come up with content that's going to yeah. work for clients yeah. um so i think it was really interesting when i heard your talk at speaking yeah. that, that there was a possible crossover and like yeah. you know you yeah. can almost tailor campaigns with um, with adverts that you've got and yeah. you know um, actual videos with i don't know an email marketing campaign that you're doing yes. or yeah yeah, or yeah. social yeah. media just general yeah. ads yeah 
exactly and that's actually that kind of going back to a bit about virality and kind of how well things do is is as with everything these days it's part of a wider marketing picture and mm. a, an individual video is going to do a lot better if there's all the other elements going around it than just having a video likewise you know it it, it brings people together it's about making it part of a it's a critical part of your marketing strategy i think yeah. that's the, the underutilization if you haven't got video in your marketing strategy what are you doing yeah um but actually it's still only it is part of that strategy it's not yeah. going to be the only thing you do and having other components is important too sort of intertwined they work yeah, together don't they? exactly they're complementary yeah so to normally finish our podcast we yeah. finish with quick fire questions <laughs> yes yes um and I'm sure you've had a look at these. So you've had some time to. Well, you had yeah, a brief look. I had a brief look. Yeah. So these yeah. are going to be authentic. Sh- which they is are because they're going to be off the cuff answers. So yeah, yeah. we have established this. So the first one is. I thought I'd wing it. Yeah. What is your industry hot take? Who? Uh, I want to go back to authenticity. I think this year the most important thing businesses need to do is actually look at how they're keeping customers because I think in a time where people's pockets, you know, the purse strings are tightening. Purse strings are yeah. tightening. Actually it's not necessarily going to be about spending lots of money reaching new people. How can you keep your existing customers? Because they're already engaged with your brand. They've already bought your product and probably like it. Mm. What content can you create to ensure they don't go somewhere else or stop buying from you to a competitor or or just stop spending at all? So rather than competing for new coin, compete for the people you've already got. Loyalty. Reward loyalty by making content that appeals to them. That is is good. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Next one. What is your one thing that you would like to see introduced to the industry? Is it more Ooh. maybe B Corp corporations, people doing things with a clear mission or yeah. you know, purpose? Um, I would love to see less greenwashing. Mm. I think a lot of brands are making content that shows that they're doing really good, great green, environmentally friendly stuff when they're not at all. They're just they're just making content to make themselves look good. Uh, and I think video makers and marketeers should stop letting them get away with it. Yeah. Hold them accountable. Hold them accountable. Call them out. Exactly. Okay. Uh, Penultimate question yep. is um, three tips for businesses taking on video. Uh, maybe not tips, three bits of advice. Yeah, you know sure. what do brands and businesses need to have worked out before they yep. come to someone like you and yep. go, right? Yeah, I'd like a video. I think first of all, understand your target audience. I think any good marketer would say that anyway. Yep. So, who are we making videos for? What do you want them to do? And that comes part, but down to, I think we get the best results for clients when they've got a wider strategy. So. How does this video fit into your wider marketing strategy? And if we're making content for you in January, how are you going to follow that up in it further down in the year, right? You know, ad fatigue, content fatigue, you need to be consistently updating that. Mm. Great if you've got some money to spend on a video, but actually how are you going to keep up? You know, if you get good results from it, what's your next plan? Because it might take you two or three months to yeah. get to the point where you've you got a video. Keep the ball rolling, haven't you? Keep the ball rolling. So, you know, what is your strategy and how does video fit into that? That is good. Think yeah, it's, it. it's, you know, the foresight that you really need to yeah. consider. Um, and the final one yep. is quite a broad one. Videos, just as a general man, not even not even yeah. creating adverts or content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Videos for YouTube or TikTok, which which you prefer? Ooh, because I know you love a scroll on TikTok. I am I'm You're terrible. Like a doom I am a terrible TikTok doom scroller, mostly because I find it short, snappy, engaging, and actually funny how it works. Funny, <laughs> and actually, you know, there's it, some funny content on it. Lots of dogs, you know, uh, whatever. Could be there. Uh, I actually think YouTube though. Yeah, you know, I, I started out when I was working TV. It was YouTube that kind of convinced me to start doing my own stuff. Mm. I used to watch people like Casey Neistat, Peter yeah. McKinnon, Potato Jet. Still do. Yeah. Um, when they upload. When they upload, yeah. Well, Casey Neistat, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and actually, some of them I don't watch as much anymore. But yeah. they were the ones that really got me into filmmaking and understanding filmmaking and kit. Gerald mm. Dunn's another really good mm. one. If anyone wants any kit tips, um, and so they they got me interested in video. And I think that to me, I still go on YouTube and will watch. Things yeah. that are like 20 yeah. minutes long that probably are pointlessly boring, but I actually find really interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. I mean, I, I think I'm the same yeah. as in yeah. YouTube is the thing that I I started watching when yeah. I was like 12. Exactly. And I still watch now. Like it's, exactly. it's not, it doesn't seem to be going away. No. Um, and it's pretty much what's the second most popular website on earth, right? So it's, yeah, the second most popular search, search engine. engine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you can get lost in there. And you can. And you can. That recommended yeah. page is dangerous. It is. Well, yeah. In, yeah, in many ways. <laughs> okay. To, uh, you know, wrap up. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank you for coming on to the podcast. Thanks for having and me. Sharing some really good insights. And I think that our listeners and watchers will really find beneficial. Hope so. And yeah. um, cool. we look forward to welcoming you back yeah. in, the, in the future. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be keen. I, I'm always, yeah, keen if, if I can say anything else I'm, useful. I'm looking forward to the newest rendition of the Wolf Jumper. Uh, this, is, this, is the, this is the go-to for now. It yeah. is. It is. Yeah. If, you, if you see Jay wearing this, say, I saw you on the podcast. 
to yes. own that. Yes, yeah, yeah, new stash, why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, so last of all, uh, I want to thank the listeners and the watchers for tuning into this episode and we'll catch you on the next one. Yeah.